Hey guys, I'm Clint with ATS. This is, I guess, what you might consider kind of the third part of uh, 68 RFE pressure control and valve body and kind of how, how to make 68s work. But 68, you know, all the Chrysler transmissions are obviously very complicated. And as far as modifying them to handle the power, the bigger powers of the aftermarket uh, engine performance, you know, there's a there's a lot you have to do to them. Not only, as you saw earlier, in the valve body extreme modifications and pieces and in the transmission and in the torque converter, but how you control a 68 RFE. And more so is how you control these, elect these late model electronic transmissions is much different these days than just changing a spring in the pump or increasing pressure overall because the transmission is in a more of a closed loop or a direct relationship with the TCM. So. What I'm gonna do is explain to you how exactly the pressure control circuit on a 68 RFE works. And that pretty much, like I say, whether it's a 68 RFE, a 545, um, any of the Chrysler trannies, any of the Jeep transmissions, any of the Hemi trannies, um, across the board is basically they use this closed loop uh, style of uh, pressure control, even the 48RE governor pressure control uses the same exact the same exact circuit. So ironically, what I'm explaining to you here is very, very similar to the way rail pressure works on a high pressure injector pump. You know, in the old days, really old days with transmissions and other circuits, the ECM, electronic control module, or the TCM, transmission control module, would actually just send a signal to the tranny and would hope that the transmission would do it. Well, today's day and age, all the signals that are sent to a transmission are checked based on some kind of a sensory um, output, and the sensory output basically tells the TCM or the ECM back what it's doing. So the ECM will ask for something, the transmission will send it back. If it doesn't get it, then it's out of range. Well, that creates a real problem when it comes to the Chrysler trannies, because controlling the Chrysler trannies you have to have a system that actually monitors, that has that feedback system and gives the information back. So this is basically how it works. So in this scenario, this is your TCM, that's your transmission control module. This is your EPC solenoid. So this is inside the transmission. This is your solenoid block that we're gonna be referring to. This solenoid block is what is responsible for commanding the transmission line pressure up and down and by the way, transmission line pressure is what clamps the clutches together. The 68 RFE from the factory maxes out hydraulically at 160 PSI, which you learned in other videos, earlier videos. And that's why we modify the, the pump assembly and the, and the, I'm sorry, the valve body assembly and the pump. So instead of maxing out at 160 PSI line pressure, after modifying it, we can go to a little over 300 PSI. Well, that PSI rating is ultimately what is responsible for clamping the clutches together to reduce or eliminate slip. As power increases over stock, then you have to increase line pressure to compensate for that higher engine power level so the transmission clutches don't slip. Well, on the 68 RFE, the transmission is hydraulically limited to 160, so we do our mechanical modifications inside the valve body, which is basically replacing the valve body with all of our upgraded parts, the channel plate and the, the uh, accumulators and separator plate and the gaskets and all that. So now that's good for to handle 300 PSI, now we have to be able to command the pressure. Well, the TCM has to be able to command to get to the pressure you want to shoot for. The solenoid controls the transmission pump. The pump goes up in line pressure and this line, this mechanical pressure goes into the sensor, which that sensor is on the other side of the 68 RFE, which is this guy. So it's your little speed sensor here, or I'm sorry, your transmission um, pressure sensor. This, this transducer will register up to right at about 300 PSI, a little bit over. Like I say, from the factory, the transmission only does, only makes a maximum of 160 PSI. When we modify it, then it can go to 300. So, so since we can see what this pressure is, and we can monitor this pressure now from literally zero or 50 PSI up to 300 PSI. Now the TCM can see what the voltage is. And this TCM is looking for 
a given voltage or pressure, it asks the EPC solenoid to command a pressure. The pump steps up and makes the pressure. The pressure applies in hydraulically, goes to the sensor, the sensor reports. So it's doing this and it's in a loop. It's just going round in circles. So as the TCM is asking for pressure, it needs to command it. Well, the only way we're gonna get the transmission to go to higher than commanded line pressure is by either reprogramming the TCM, which in some cases is a, is a viable option, or you have to modify a signal. Well, here's, here's where, the, where it gets very interesting. The TCMs that were, when the TCM and the ECM became integrated around 2010, the engine control module and the transmission control module basically become one TCM. It's been proven that programming the TCM doesn't control line pressure well, as you'll see in the little video clip that I'm gonna show you. Now this is the same video with the factory ECM control. Definitely not smooth and the training was very inconsistent obviously because it was following the pressure going all over the place. Um, right now that as that TCM begins to run line pressure, line pressure gets out of control. It actually gets absolutely whacked out. Like we've had gauges that would actually break um, on the test drive that they're whacking so much that the way they're vibrating is that is pressure is going up, down, up, down, up, down. The, the problem for it is the TCM hasn't been designed, the PIDs basically, the reaction rates can't be programmed or is it set up to register how quickly it's asking for a pressure increase, how quickly the pressure's increasing, and it goes to the sensor, and then the sensor gives the value to the TCM, and the TCM reacts. So it gets this wild spike. So anything above about 200 PSI, typically on reprogrammed TCMs, can't control it, and you'll see that in the gauge. Well, in order to fix that, we kind of go about it in a little bit different way. It's, it's much more complex, but it's a, it's a very, very stable way. Now, there's pressure boxes out there that basically just get in place of this voltage. So if you were to take this transducer, it plugs in the side of your tranny, and you were to basically lie to the TCM, and you tell it's a little bit lower than stock, then if you put a little box here, and say you tied that into throttle or map, then you could basically emulate the signal a little bit and kind of lie to it and you can make pressure go up. Well, that's where you have pressure boxes, for instance, like this guy, that is a um, you know, pressure box that just kind of a you know, cheap plug-in pressure box that literally just has a male, female. It plugs in the line pressure sensor, it takes a signal and you know, they kind of lie to it a little bit and they change the signal and then they vary it based on map. So it's kind of a halfway effective way to control line pressure. The problem is, is like I explained, when you have this line pressure out of control, that's not a, that's not a sensor issue, that's a TCM drive problem because the TCM is having to drive the electronic pressure control solenoid based on the driver. Well, you can't fix the PID problem because you're still going through the loop. You know, you're just going through the loop, but this lie is just making that bigger, essentially. So all of a sudden your pressures get farther and farther out of control. Problem is isolating, when you're wanting 200 PSI line pressure or 250 PSI line pressure and your gauge is going from 50 to 250, 50 to 250, so quickly, literally break the needle, that's a problem in the transmission. So we, gotta, we really gotta get around that. So this is what the co-pilot does. Okay, this is what the co-pilot Drivability is great, and that's with the co-pilot controlling pressure. So what we do with the co-pilot is I'm going to move over to the transmission for a moment. The co-pilot is this guy. So this is a computer. It's not just a set of resistors or, you know, a way to kind of change the, the EPC or the uh, line pressure sensor value. It's actually a computer that communicates between the TCM and the transmission and then between the co-pilot and the solenoid pack. So you have kind of like two loops going on here. So you have the co-pilot 
that is gathering signals from the throttle position sensor, from the map sensor. So now we're looking at commanded engine load. We're looking at actual engine load. We hook into the output speed sensor on the tranny, pass that through. So again, we have output speed sensor value, so another input with the, to in, input into a relatively complicated map. And then we have our transducer connector, which is the only connector that these pressure boxes hook into, and we plug those in. So now you have the transducer voltage in and out. So I'll draw this as we're going. So we have the co-pilot box right here. So now we have the co-pilot control and the TCM is going into it. And then you have the transducer control and we're passing that through. So now that we're passing the transducer control through the co-pilot, so we can make that signal whatever we want. And then we also have the speed sensor that plugs into it. And we have the TPS that plugs into it and we have the map sensor that plugs into it. So we're gathering information from engine load, from commanded engine load, from the vehicle speed, the transmission pressure, and the line pressure. And then, most critical, is this guy. So this is what makes this all possible. So not only do we gather all those signals, but we take over, we plug this directly into the, the transmission solenoid block. And the solenoid block, plugs in, kind of like so. And then we have this guy, which is the negative, and so the computer goes into it. So now the computer plugs into this guy, the signals go to the transmission. So now we're completely independent of the transmission. So now we have the ability to completely control, not only gather signals from the transmission, but to actually drive the solenoid block. That means we have we pass all these through, the pressure switches, the, trans, the EPC solenoid, everything we want to do, we pass through the co-pilot. So there's a reason why there's a bunch of wires there, so we're taking that information. And then lastly, we have a coil box, and the coil box emulates the transmission. So the TCM can control the coil box and the co-pilot, and the co-pilot can independently control the transmission. Well, this is what it does for us. So, we have now full control over the EPC. That means the co-pilot now can drive the EPC solenoid. That means we have independent control of the transmission completely. We're looking at what the transmission actual pressure is. We get to control it in a closed loop form. Transmission, pressure solenoid, co-pilot, EPC, transducer, co-pilot, right? Instead of the instead of going through the TCM. So now that the co-pilot is driving the EPC solenoid pressure and we have our own PIDs, that means that we can run line pressure up to 300 PSI and stabilize it. So we have a nice fluid curve, a very, very smooth control of the transmission while the TCM is driving the co-pilot and then the co-pilot is driving the sensor back to the TCM. We just make the TCM very, very happy. So we can completely do anything we want to the transmission, which an example of, say you, max, say you smack the throttle, you have a high rate of throttle and <clears throat> torque spikes up, then we can ramp that line pressure up accordingly to bring the clutch packs in and the converter clutch in smoothly with enough line pressure and not have that spiking so you don't have a chattering, you know, all the stress on the pump and the clutches and have a very fluid transition, a very, very smooth but powerful apply pressure to the transmission and only run as much, much line pressure as we need. On the other side, when you back off, then since we're, since we're following, we know what commanded engine torque is, is what, you, what your foot is. We know what actual line pressure or actual torque of the engine is, which is your EP, or your uh, pressure control, uh, your map sensor, excuse me. The map sensors tell us what the actual load of the engine is. Then we can plug all that into our map and totally control the line pressure transmission based on what it needs to be for a perfectly 
well shifting transmission. So what you don't get when you just do like the little voltage um, things into the, into the pressure transducer or you know the little pressure box that is kind of like a dumb pressure box, you, do, you don't get control of the transmission. So there's a, there's a ton of things that are happening here when you actually take the time to build a computer that monitors all this information and drives a solenoid directly and gives you some user interface control over what's going on with the LTU tranny. Now, most of our co-pilots also have a face on them, which gives you some feedback diagnostics that tells you if your EPC solenoid is, going, is falling out of range, for instance. The transducers on these things are very, very problematic. This little guy, you know, it's, about, it's only about a $70 sensor, but it's responsible for the life of the tranny. <clears throat> One of the unique features of the co-pilot is we've done so many of these, we've gathered so much data that we've kind of mapped out like the worst case scenario, what voltage should never fall on the sensor and what PWM signal to the EPC solenoid should never go above or below. So we put some fail safes in that even if the transducer fails, completely goes out, we know that we should never be driving that solenoid less than or more than a percentage rate. So you don't have the, the faulty um, values of a transducer, of a $70 transducer causing your transmission to fail because the voltage is off. So the ECM would think that there's enough line pressure in the transmission, say it might think that it's, it's 100 PSI, when in actuality it's only 40 PSI. And a lot of 68 RFEs that come in here, we see that, that have bad transducers. So a $70 transducer really gave false information to the TCM and the TCM drove line pressure lower than what's healthy. So the transmission fails. So because of that, we've put a lot of fail safes into the actual computer since we're driving the EPC directly and making sure that the computer, the co-pilot never allows the drive of the transmission to go below a standard, so it smokes the tranny. So there's a lot of preventative maintenance that goes into the co-pilot. And that's really across the board. Anytime you have, you know, any of our co-pilots that have a coil box, you know, pretty much it has the same, same basic operation. You know, we always, we always look at the information, run it into our map, and then control the transmission based on what's healthy for the vehicle based on the power level. So that's a little bit of insight. Um, how the co-pilot works. Co-pilots are, um, they work on stock vehicles, modified vehicles, our transmissions, competitors' transmissions, it doesn't really matter, it, wor it works across the board. Uh, re really, really popular piece, very inexpensive upgrade to any, uh, any transmission, which is uh, plug and play. You know, it usually takes about an hour and uh, keep them in stock. So for more information, you know, tune into our uh, YouTube channel and continue to watch the website for updated videos. Um, feel free to call our sales staff or our tech staff. They've got a lot of information on these things. Any questions you guys have? So appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in and uh, we'll enjoy continuing to get educational videos out there for you guys.